So, in this uh, set of special lectures, uh, we shall do quantum Hall effect to begin with um, and um, then we will see that how it uh, gets connected to more exotic phenomena. Uh, so, uh, we are familiar with Hall effect. Hall effect is an effect which was uh, discovered in uh, 1879 by Edwin Hall, uh, in which the current is uh, made to flow in a thin laminar sample in uh, say the x direction and there is a voltage that is generated in the y direction because of the migration of the charge carriers um, abided by the Lorentz force equations and at equilibrium one measures a transverse voltage which is known as the Hall voltage. Uh, so, this is the quantum version of that and in which we will see that uh, the resistivity versus magnetic field plot which we have seen even in the classical uh, Hall effect. Uh, here there are some uh, strange uh, features in this uh, data and we will uh, discuss that how it comes about. So, there are uh, in principle two kinds of uh, uh, Hall effects uh, which are integer quantum Hall effect which is what we are going to do uh, mostly and uh, there are also fractional quantum Hall effect. I will just mention what they are, but we will not get into the discussion because they are more uh, difficult and uh, they need interactions to be taken into account. So, the first experiments exploring quantum Hall effect uh, were uh, performed by von Klitzing in 1980 and then approximately which is uh, 100 years later after Edwin Hall discovered the classical Hall effect as we have just mentioned. And uh, Klitzing was awarded Nobel prize in 1985 for this discovery and you will see that uh, why this, um, this experimental discovery is so uh, important uh, so as to you know warrant a Nobel prize. Uh, so, we shall talk about only IQHE as I just mentioned. So, what is the system? The system is a thin uh, two dimensional material or quasi two dimensional material uh, in which the electrons are restricted to move in uh, two dimension and uh, the extent in the third dimension is uh, fairly limited. So, the motion is uh, confined in the, uh, in the plane uh, let us call it as x and this as the y direction. So, this is a two dimensional electron gas and uh, it is written as 2 d e g in short and uh, there is a strong magnetic field that has been applied which is perpendicular to it. So, it is coming out of the plane and uh, this is uh, the magnetic field is uh, of the order of 5 to 30 tesla. Uh, the experiments are conducted at very low temperatures, so that the quantum effects become important. Disorder uh, is an integral part of this um, of this effect or this experimental discovery and uh, it plays an important role in uh, seeing the phenomena better. Uh, in fact, in the absence of disorder it can be shown that it uh, reduces to classical Hall effect. So, this is the uh, plot of uh, rho x x and rho x y. So, let me point out which are uh, the. So, what is happening is that. So, this in this system a current is made to flow in this direction let us call it as j x and there is a voltage that is developed here in the transverse direction and because of the segregation of charges here and uh, this voltage is called as uh, Hall voltage. So, there is also a resistivity in the direction of the flowing current which we will call it as rho x x which is uh, generally called as the longitudinal resistivity. Or it is also called as the magneto resistance. And there is the other one which is the called as the transverse resistivity and also called as the Hall resistance. Resistance or resistivity they are two 
different things because we know that the resistivity is a, a property of the sample while resistance uh, has also the geometrical properties built into it. Uh, so, in principle uh, R uh, which is the resistance which is what the experimentalists measure uh, that has a relationship with the resistivity L into 2 minus D uh, and this you can understand it well by, uh, uh, by noting down the definition of uh, resistance that you have read in school for uh, a wire of uh, diameter D and length L. So, that goes as R goes as a rho into L over A and uh, so this has a dimension which is L and divided by L square. So, this is equal to rho L to the power minus 1 and that is the story with D equal to 3. And uh, now, this difference between the resistance and the resistivity that go away uh, for D equal to 2. So, uh, one can safely talk about either resistance or resistivity at D equal to 2, because the geometrical factor appearing here uh, will not contribute anything to the formula extra. So, R becomes uh, numerically equal to uh, D and uh, that is why we can talk about either of either resistivity or resistance. And uh, so, these are the plots for, so these step like plateaus are the plot for the Hall resistance which we will uh, denote by rho x y and these spikes that you see are for the longitudinal resistance or the magnitude resistance. So, these are our plots. In the classical Hall effect, the Hall resistance or the Hall resistivity as a function of B was a straight line. Here, it is far from being a straight line. There are plateaus at some uh, integer values, we will uh, discuss what that is and at i equal to 2 and i equal to 3 and i equal to 4 and 5 and 6 and 8 and 10 and so on. And so, these are in units of e square over or rather h over e square. So, the resistivity, the Hall resistivity for this plateau is are uh, 2 h over e square, this is 3 h over e square and 4 h over e square and so on. Uh, exactly that and these integers are independent of the material, independent of the amount of disorder present and is very, very universal and so much so that these integers are correct up to uh, ninth or 10 to the power minus 9 or 9 decimal places. So, the effects or the experimental observations are that robust and absolutely independent of the material used and hence this uh, was really a discovery that has uh, taken the scientific community by a storm and uh, this lot of work since 1980 uh, that have uh, started and still going on in various fields. So, this is another important thing about this resistivity that the longitudinal resistance is 0 most of the time, but it shows a peak as the Hall resistivity makes a transition from one plateau to another. So, it is only when it makes a transition from one plateau to another, uh, it shows a peak and you see the peaks are all there uh, accompanied by the jump from one plateau to another. So, uh, you see the rho x x which is the longitudinal resistivity or the magneto resistance, it is 0 which means that resistivity 0 means it is a, a perfect metal or a perfect conductor and suddenly the thing uh, the resistivity shoots up giving rise that there is a, a lot of uh, resistance there. So, the system is undergoing a transition a series of transition from being insulator to metal to insulator to metal and so on. So, these are some of the interesting features of the quantum Hall effect which are 
which are very important and for us to understand that what is going on. So, just to summarize uh, that we have said this the Hall resistivity and the longitudinal resistivity the Hall resistivity is given by rho x y and the longitudinal resistivity by rho x x exhibit very interesting behavior as we have just seen. Uh, while rho x y has plateaus at integer multiples of h by e square that is uh, rho x y equal to h by e square and 1 over gamma where gamma is an integer up to an accuracy <coughs> 10 to the power minus 9. And uh, because of this robustness of these plateaus uh, and uh, remember that we have said that disorder is an integral part of the system and since disorder does not do anything which means the uh, the fact that translational invariance is broken uh, does not have any effect on this. So, there must be some other mechanism that is protecting the flatness of the plateaus. H over E square is thus taken as a quantum of resistivity and it is also called as a Klitzing constant by the name of the discoverer. It has a value approximately 25.8 kilo ohm. And uh, you can see that for gamma equal to 1 here, uh, this denotes exactly one quantum of resistivity. So, it becomes 1 over 1, which is uh, just simply h over e square. There are more uh, features which we unfold one by one. The center of each plateau occurs at the magnetic, as the magnetic field assumes a value which is h n over gamma e where uh, h over gamma uh, rather n over uh, it is n over gamma and h by e where h by e is called as a flux quantum. So, as it takes a fractional uh, multiple of this uh, phi 0 or rather this uh, uh, some coefficient multiplied by phi 0 then uh, that is where the, the plateau occurs. So, it could happen that the value of the magnetic field and so n is the density of the material and n is the electronic density. So, what it is saying is that the value of the magnetic field and the electron density have to conspire to give rise to a plateau. So, this is the flux quantum phi 0 which is equal to h over e. So, these are uh, precisely the values of the magnetic field at which the gamma number of Landau levels are filled. Uh, at this moment it is an unknown word, but we will see what Landau levels mean and the Hall resistivity takes a value as we have given in equation 1 which is this. The quantization also persists over a range of the external magnetic field and another striking feature which is uh, we have already told is that they are robust to disorder and it may sound odd in the context of condensed matter physics because a large number of phenomena gets uh, adversely affected by presence of disorder while this is not. So, the longitudinal resistivity which is rho x x it shows a surprise as it is 0 most of the time as we have told. So, it is 0 here. 0 here, 0 here and so on except when there is a jump in rho x y from one uh, plateau to another. So, the above features can be understood from a classical picture. So, let us see what the classical picture unfolds in this particular case. Um, it has got nothing to do with quantum mechanics, but these will help us in understanding. So, Ohm's law states that um, j equal to sigma e, this is another way of writing uh, v equal to i r uh, as everyone knows. Uh, sigma is a, uh, is a conductivity, so sigma is conductivity, uh, j is current density and e is the electric field. So, sigma is a number if the current density j and the electric field E are pointing in the same direction. So, j x equal to sigma E x and so on and in which case sigma is a number. 
but in presence of a magnetic field sigma is a tensor it is a 2 by 2 matrix having a form. So, sigma is equal to sigma x x sigma x y minus sigma x y sigma x x. So, it tells you that diagonal elements are same of diagonal elements are antisymmetric. So, these are um, the features of this matrix and uh, so if we write the conductivity tensor, we can also write the resistivity tensor. So, the resistivity tensor is written as rho which is equal to sigma inverse. This preserves the similar uh, properties with an um, off diagonal uh, elements being antisymmetric. Uh, so, the it is easy to see that the components have the relation that sigma x x equal to rho x x divided by rho x x square plus rho x y square and the off diagonal elements have minus rho x y divided by rho x x square plus rho x y square. Now, if rho x y equal to 0, then we get uh, sigma x x equal to 0. Uh, so, sigma x x equal to sorry sigma x x is not equal to 0, but sigma x x is equal to uh, 1 over rho x x. So, this is familiar. Uh, and uh, sigma x y is equal to 0. So, this is 1, 2 is that if rho x y is not equal to 0, then sigma x x and sigma x y both exist. So, this is clear to uh, easy to see that if rho x y is not equal to 0, then both of them will uh, exist and uh, provided of course, your uh, rho x x is also not equal to 0. So, now consider rho x x is equal to 0. So, sigma x x equal to 0. So, that is clear from here if rho x x is 0 then sigma x x is equal to 0. Uh, if of course, uh, rho x y is not equal to 0. So, what do we want to call the system with rho x x equal to 0? So, we have rho x x equal to 0 sigma x x equal to 0. On one hand this tells that it is a perfect conductor and this says that it is a perfect insulator. So, one is implying the other, but one inference is that it is a perfect conductor, the other inference is that it is a perfect insulator. So, the question is that what is going on? And in order to understand this, let us just look at the Drude's model. So, in the Drude's model, this is in the preliminary solid state physics course. 
where uh, in the free electron theory you have studied Drude model, uh, which gives you the, uh, the assumption that the electrons are non interacting and they only interact when they collide with each other, which happens after every um, time scale given by the, uh, the relaxation time. So, uh, between uh, these relaxed two scatterings, the electron propagates as free particle. So, that is the assumption and the conductivity is given by uh, 1 plus omega c square tau square, where tau is the relax relaxation time given by L by V f and omega c is some cyclotron frequency, where L is the mean free path and this is the velocity. And sigma 0 is taken as any square tau over m uh, with n as the density m being the mass. So, thus sigma x x equal to 0 imply that the relaxation time becomes extremely large. So, that tells that no scattering. So, in this particular case the current current uh, is flowing perpendicular to the field. and it has a form which is we are talking about two dimensional transport. So, this is like 0 rho x y because uh, rho x s is equal to 0 minus rho x y and 0 and uh, j x j y and this is equal to rho x y j y and rho x uh, y j x with a minus sign and so on. So, it is easy to see that uh, that the E x is, uh, is the, so j y is in the direction of E x and j x in the direction of opposite to the direction of E y uh, and that tells that E and j are perpendicular vectors. So, if E and j that is the electric field and the current density are perpendicular then E dot j equal to 0, but remember that E dot j has the meaning of work done in accelerating the charges. And so, the fact that uh, E dot j equal to 0, it means that there is a steady current implies that there is a steady current flowing in the sample. which does not require any work to be done and hence no dissipation. So, sigma x x equal to 0 tells us that no current is flowing in the longitudinal direction
So, this is like an insulator while rho x x equal to 0 tells that there is no dissipation of energy. So, this is the like a perfect conductor. Let me add the word perfect here also like a perfect conductor. So, uh, so sigma x x equal to 0 equal to rho x x is accompanied by by that sigma x y equal to minus of rho x y equal to nu e square over h and nu being an integer. So, this quantization of nu being an integer to the accuracy of 10 to the power minus 9 is independent of the de details of the system and hence the effect is universal. So, this goes back to this plot. So, this plot tells exactly uh, that the rho x y will become a quantized number in, in units of h over e square and it will make a transition from one plateau to another and during which the longitudinal or the magneto resistance, longitudinal resistivity of the magneto resistance will show a sharp peak and this uh, at least qualitatively explains that these are uh, universal features of a two dimensional electron gas uh, and persists even in presence of disorder. An important thing is that since disorder is not protecting um, the plateaus that is it is uh, getting or rather it is contributing to the robustness of the plateaus as we have seen uh, and a magnetic field already has broken time reversal symmetry. So, there has to be uh, another uh, quantity or another uh, you know um, sort of uh, preserving factor that preserves this uh, plateau and which is uh, what uh, has been attributed to the topological uh, properties of the system that uh, is, um, is protecting these plateaus. So, what happens is that uh, in presence of the magnetic field, uh, so the electrons go around in such circular orbits and uh, the radius of this or rather radii of this orbits are proportional to the magnetic field. So, this does not lead to any transport, but however, the transport occurs along the edges where the electrons actually skip and these eight states are robust no matter uh, whatever uh, kind of perturbations you put. So, these eight states will be robust and will carry current and will give rise to this resistivity curves uh, while the bulk of the material that is interior of the two dimensional electron gas the electrons will not contribute to any transport of charges. Let us try to understand these uh, features better and let us talk about uh, simple language a non interacting. Uh, so, we want to talk about Landau levels. So, electrons in a magnetic field. So, these are non interacting electrons in a magnetic field. So, remember what happens uh, in uh, for a charged particle to be put in a, a magnetic field 
the canonical momentum p gets replaced by p uh, minus q a over uh, well uh, the c will drop uh, those are old units we can work in new units. Uh, now, q is equal to minus e for electron. So, we can write this as p plus e a where a is the vector potential and it has a relationship with the magnetic field given by curl a equal to b that is the magnetic field we are talking about. Okay. So, the Schrodinger equation that we have to solve is 1 over 2 m p plus E a square psi equal to E psi. So, that is the time independent Schrodinger equation where uh, the p has been replaced by p plus E a. Uh, now, Schrodinger equation is gauge invariant. So, even if we change a to a a minus a minus gradient of a scalar function, we'll call it chi an arbitrary scalar function which is a function of r only. Then psi simply picks up a sign which is given by And because if psi picks up only a sign, uh, only a sorry phase, not sign, it is a phase, this quantity, which is a physical quantity, remains invariant. So, just to revise it once again, that we write down the Schrodinger equation, uh, the A is a gauge invariant and uh, because of the gauge invariance psi picks up a phase of this form uh, because psi only picks up a phase and not anything else the psi mod square will not have this phase because its psi mod square is psi star psi and you will have a simple um, you know these will be same and hence we can uh, do a gauge transformation on this and still get the same uh, result. So, now choose a particular gauge for calculation and that gauge is uh, let us call it A x equal to minus B y. So, the component x component of A is equal to minus B y while the y component and z component to be equal to 0 this is called as the Landau gauge that is the definition. This is fine because curl A is B and so B is in the z direction as is a requirement of the Hall effect. So, we have taken in principle we have taken a three dimensional Schrodinger equation, but however very soon you will see that uh, that it boils down to actually a two dimensional motion and the B is actually pointing the external magnetic field is pointing in the z direction. And if that is the case then uh, in this gauge Schrodinger equation I am writing it uh, in short. So, it becomes equal to 1 over 2 m uh, p x minus e b y whole square plus p y square over 2 m plus a p z square over 2 m and a psi of r which is equal to e psi of r. So, as any quantum mechanics problem, 
uh, we have to find out the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for this particular equation. So, you can see that uh, the z direction the particle motion is like a free particle. So, we have the energy in the z direction is like a free particle and there is no other term which involves z. So, the motion is is that of a free particle. So, now uh, we can now neglect the z direction because it is like a free particle and see what happens in the x and y direction. And to see that let us write down uh, p x minus e b y square plus p y square over 2 m and now uh, the wave function let us call it as f x y is no longer a function of z because in the z direction the uh, wave function is like let us call it as uh, say f of uh, z is some with some normalization it is like exponential i k z. So, we are only concerned about the two dimensional motion and this is what we were talking about earlier that even if you have taken a three dimensional case in presence of a magnetic field for a non interacting electrons it boils down to a problem of two dimensional motion and this is equal to some uh, epsilon and uh, f x y. So, this is uh, like the Hamiltonian in two dimension h x y. Uh, it is easy to see that p x is a constant of motion. Why p x is a constant of motion? Because nowhere in this uh, Hamiltonian uh, we have x the variable position variable x and p x is equal to this is equal to 0. So, that tells that p x is a constant of motion. Remember p y is not a constant of motion because of the gauge chosen where we have a y remaining. So, p y does not commute with y and hence it is not a constant of motion. So, there is no uh, term uh, because there is no term linear in x this is what happens and that also as I told because of the gauge, but it does not matter even if you would have taken a, a, a term uh, a to be uh, b x uh, then the x would have been uh, p x would not have been a constant of motion while p y would have been. So, x and y simply gets interchanged. So, if p x is a constant of motion then p x is actually quantized by this uh, form uh, where n x is of this uh, quantized in this form which is uh, uh, which takes values which are uh, like 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, one can write this equation let us call this uh, the original equation to be 1 and this equation to be 2. So, one can write equation 2 as uh, p y square over 2 m plus half m uh, e b over m square y minus y 0 square f of y which is epsilon f of y. So, this is the equation where y 0 is equal to p x over e b. So, that is the equation that is the Schrodinger equation that we have to solve and it is very clear that this equation is the equation uh, for the same equation same Schrodinger equation when written for a harmonic oscillator in the y direction and uh, oscillating about this point E 0 given by p x by E b. And uh, then of course, we know that we have solved uh, the problem in the sense that we know that it is of uh, the harmonic oscillator form. So, it is a simple harmonic oscillator
with frequency E B over M. So, the eigenvalues are simple. epsilon equal to n plus half uh, E b by m and h cross. So, that is our, uh, so it is n plus half h cross omega and omega is given by this. So, this is the Eigen value for this problem and these are called as uh, the Landau levels. Not only we know about the energy eigenvalues, we also know about the eigenfunctions. So, the two dimensional eigenfunctions So, it is a free particle we told that the k x uh, h uh, commutes with p x or k x. So, it is a free particle in that direction uh, in the k x direction and some normalization. Uh, this is the Gaussian which is E b by y minus y 0 square divided by h cross and now the Hermite polynomial you must be knowing the properties of the Hermite polynomial when n equal to even the polynomial is even when n equal to odd the polynomial is odd and it is given by uh, y minus y 0 divided by h cross and that is the complete solution of the problem. There are more things to understand here is that. So, these are uh, Landau levels and these are the Landau level energies. And now, you see that a p x is a constant of motion So, that tells that all n x that satisfy all n x that satisfy this um, uh, quantization condition 2 pi n x over L x, where uh, y 0 equal to h cross uh, h sorry h over b L x uh, into n x. All n x values are valid solutions and since all n x values are valid solutions, the problem is hugely gen degenerate. and gives rise to the enormous degeneracy of the Landau levels. Because each n x value that satisfy this relation um, L x is the dimension of the sample in the x direction will be a valid solution and hence it is a enormous uh, this degeneracy will be um, uh, there. Now, what is the extent of degeneracy? So, let us try to understand. So, let us take this uh, energy uh, value. So, your y is y naught. So, this is the point about which the particle is undergoing uh, simple harmonic motion. So, this is given by h over E b into k x and of course, as I told that k x is written as 2 pi n x by L x. So, my n x max is given by uh, k x max and divided by uh, I mean k x max into L x by 2 pi. Now, if we put that uh, this k x max here and take y 0 which is the point in the y direction about which the simple harmonic motion takes place to be the. So, take y 0 max equal to L y which is the 
size of the sample in the y dimension uh, y direction. So, it cannot y 0 cannot be greater than L y. So, the particle is undergoing a simple harmonic motion about y 0 and y 0 the maximum of y 0 is the sample dimension in the y direction. So, the degeneracy is then given by g is equal to n x max which is equal to E b L x L y divided by h which is equal to E b by h into a where a is the area of the sample. So, let us make two comments here um, one is that the degeneracy. So, if we put all these uh, this y 0 max to be equal to L y and put k x max in terms of n x max one one gets this uh, this degeneracy. So, degeneracy is is proportional to B that is the magnetic field. So, as you increase magnetic field the degeneracy will increase and uh, the second is that the trajectory is centered about y 0. So, this is the story about that electrons uh, non interacting electrons are put in a magnetic field we have taken a, a simple gauge called as a Landau gauge and have solved the problem. The problem says that the motion in the z direction is that of a free particle. So, one can neglect that. So, now the Hamiltonian becomes two dimensional and so the motion is constrained in a plane in the x direction because of the choice of the gauge the particle moves as free particle with the momentum vector quantized in terms of uh, uh, 2 pi over L some uh, integer multiple of 2 pi over L and uh, in the y direction it executes a simple harmonic motion. So, we can find we can uh, we get this effective Schrodinger equation as a one dimensional Schrodinger a simple harmonic oscillator problem. We know what the energy eigenvalues are, we know what the energy eigenvectors are because any uh, quantum number in the x direction is a provides a valid solution for the problem. The problem is enormously degenerate and this degeneracy is found and this degeneracy is proportional to B and it is also proportional to the area of the sample and um, the trajectory is uh, a simple harmonic which is um, centered at y 0. Now, with this so having discussed this Landau level and degeneracy let us talk about how this problem. Now, you should be finding a similarity between this problem and the quantum Hall effect. There also the electrons were put in a strong magnetic field in the z direction here also we are talking about a single electron and uh, finding that how uh, the motion is um, in a in presence of a magnetic field. So, now the Hall voltage is defined by uh, V h which is equal to B i x over n e um, and hence the Hall coefficient R h which is equal to V h by i x uh, this is equal to B by n e. So, this is a classical result which is well known. So, uh, the degeneracy of the Landau levels is given by E b by h into a. Uh, so, the degeneracy, so this is the degeneracy. So, degeneracy per unit area which is g over a that is equal to E b by h 
let us call that is equal to n. So, R h becomes equal to E b over n e square I multiply uh, by the both the numerator and denominator here by E and uh, this becomes equal to n h by uh, n e square. So, n is the current density if n becomes equal to some nu into n where nu is an integer equal to 1, 2, 3 etcetera, then R h let us do it in a new page, then R h becomes equal to n uh, h divided by nu n e square, it becomes equal to h by nu e square. So, nu becomes equal to n by uh, e b over h. So, this was the uh, quantization that was discussed at the beginning uh, of the lecture. So, even starting with a classical picture, if you think that this uh, the assumption is that if the degeneracy per unit area is uh, a quantity which is like uh, we, we, you can take it as a, a number as n and then uh, the, the Hall resistivity it is quantized in terms of h over uh, e square or rather uh, it is a where n is the electron density, it is n h over n e square and if uh, n is taken as the gamma into this capital N, which is taken as the degeneracy per unit area, uh, then uh, it is quantized actually as h by uh, e square and 1 over nu. So, thus a uh, uh, quantized Hall resistance. is always expected this is important. If a carrier density n n and the magnetic field B B are adjusted in such a way that that the filling factor so this is called this nu is called as a filling factor uh, nu of the landau levels satisfies nu equal to n by E b h uh, becomes an integer. So, it is satisfying this becomes an integer. So, just to rephrase this that uh, even from a classical picture we got this quantization of the plateaus or the Hall resistivity or the resistance. Here what we have taken is that this is called as a filling factor where the total electron density is taken as a filling factor multiplied by the degeneracy per unit area. So, your gamma is uh, simply equal to uh, n by n. So, that is the electron density divided by this n which is the degeneracy or the degeneracy per unit area. If these two things and the b that can be adjusted in a manner such that this quantity becomes an integer then there will be quantization of the Hall resistance. So, what happens is that under this condition the magnetoconductivity let us call it as sigma x x. 
so it is a, a longitudinal becomes 0 since the electrons are moving like free particles this is what we have got that the electrons in the x direction that it moves like a free particles exclusively perpendicular to the to the electric field thus there is no scattering in the direction in the direction of the electric field is possible. So, whenever rho x y acquires a plateau uh, rho x x or rho x y y in this particular direction will drop to 0. So, this discussion on uh, quantum Hall effect at least uh, in a uh, as a you know new person or uh, an introductory uh, sort of discussion of this quantum Hall effect uh, to you should be sufficient to make you understand the importance of this particular experiment and uh, the universality of this experimental observation which is independent of the nature of the material or details of uh, the material and uh, is independent of the disorder is a very important thing. Uh, and uh, the Hall effect uh, where uh, these all these labs were very sophisticated uh, measurement of uh, resistivity is, is uh, um, there. Uh, people do the Hall effect measurement almost on uh, any sample that comes because it gives rise to uh, not only the magneto resistance or the magneto conductance also the Hall resistance and uh, helps us in understanding the um, the quantization of the plateaus. Remember this uh, thing that we have said that this has to be a number uh, depending on the value of b because the degeneracy is very high uh, the b has to be large and so in classical Hall effect this was missed and one really saw this as a straight line which is a rho x y versus b or r h versus b was seen as a straight line which is uh, having a constant slope which is given as 1 over any. Uh, however, uh, in large values of the magnetic field this is not the case where the Hall resistivity has intermittent plateaus at um, integer values uh, of h over e square. The same thing in uh, happens in fractional quantum Hall effect where uh, the, the quantization occurs at rational fractions uh, of in units of h over e square. Thank you.